Hi everyone, welcome to Britannians. I'm Joshua. So today we are going to talk uh, with uh, Vicky, who has done his master's uh, in cybersecurity uh, in Greenwich University. So Vicky is going to take us through his journey about cybersecurity and what all the uh, new people who are coming to study in cybersecurity should know about the field. So he will discuss about that with us today in this video. So let's welcome Vicky. Hi Vicky, welcome to the channel. Uh, can you uh, tell us about you? Hey Joshua, thanks for having me on your show. This is Vicky Kalweja. I recently graduated from the University of Greenwich in Information Systems. There in itself, I got inclination towards IT security and risk side of the things. And my master's thesis was on IT security and risk for working from home professionals during COVID-19 crisis, where I developed a guidance report, which any of the startups in the UK can refer to to implement their own ISMS for ISO 27001 certification. I know startups are somewhat kind of a short of funds and they have very little to spend on their security. Hence, I chose this topic in order to help them. Uh, so Vicky, uh, what is the difference between information security, cyber security and IT security? So InfoSec or information security is the set of practices to keep the data secure from unauthorized access and unauthorized alteration. Basically, it talks about CIA triad, that is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So it ensures confidentiality because we do not want any unauthorized access of our data that we need to keep secure. Integrity, because we do not want any unauthorized alteration of our data and availability as we want our data to be accessed at all times without any fail. Now, here, the data that we are talking about can be of any form. It could be of physical form as well as of the digital form. So when we talk about the physical form, we are talking about the hard copy of the data that is kind of a paperwork as well as a document that can be printed and it contains the information that is sensitive and confidential about the company. We may also have the data in the digital form, that is the user personal, user's personal information, like their credit card information, their name, their address, etc., etc. It could also have username, password, or a biometric information. So all this information that we have, we need to keep it secure. And all of this physical as well as digital information comes under the umbrella of information security. So information security is kind of a superset of the cybersecurity and not the other way around because I heard many of the people have this misconception, but it's the other way around. And if we talk about the cybersecurity, it is the practice of defending computers, servers, mobile devices, networks, and data from malicious attacks. Here, the main focus is on the malicious attacks that are targeted on the organizations these malicious attacks could be malware attacks, could be phishing attacks, man in the middle attacks, DDoS attacks, so etc. etc. And so the key difference between information security and cybersecurity is that in information security, we talk about both the realm, like physical as well as the digital data. Whereas in cybersecurity, we only talk about the digital data. So we can say that cybersecurity is the subset of the information security. And now if we come about the IT security, it refers to the protection of computers, networks, and data from unauthorized access. It involves implementing processes that prevent the misuse, modification, or theft of the sensitive company information. And when you reach, say, for example, when you reach about the bank account through an online portal like net banking and stuff like that, IT security is something that ensures that you only can see your account and make changes to your account. The overarching goal of IT security is to uphold the confidentiality and information integrity, sorry, of this kind of the sensitive information without causing the inconvenience to the user. So that is kind of the main difference between information security, cyber security, and IT security. Thank you, Vicky, for explaining that very beautifully. So why is it very difficult uh, to get into cyber security career, uh, especially for starters? 
So when we talk about why it is very difficult to get into cybersecurity, especially for starters, I always say to everyone, like it's kind of a journey, not kind of a course or the certification that you need to you need to do it in a first or second try. It is very broad and a deep kind of a field that consists of many other technologies and computing knowledge. And significance here is like we are dealing with the security of an organization. So if we talk about from the point of view of an organization, they would any day prefer someone who has already experienced in the cybersecurity community and is kind of a jack of all trades, knowing a number of tools, permutation and combination, and which is very difficult to be master here, to be honest. And if we talk about for the starters now, the only thing they have with them is that degree and the knowledge of the, how the things work in the cybersecurity community. And here we are talking about fresh graduates coming out of the colleges. They unfortunately do not have hands-on experience, which most of the important, which is the most important criteria for some of the established companies out there. What I would only like to suggest here is to get the hands-on experience on the tools used in the cybersecurity and practice those using the platform called Try and Hack Me, Hack the Box, and Blue Team Labs, etc., etc. Brush up your skills and get some certification. Build up your profile, which is very important, on the platforms like GitHub and LinkedIn, and start applying. So that is the only thing I would like to suggest over here. Yes. What are some of the entry-level jobs that you could uh, help, uh, you know, someone to get started in cybersecurity? Can you tell us about that? So when we talk about entry-level roles, there are a couple of them for the cybersecurity, like GRC, which is nothing else but governance, risk, and compliance. And if you want more details on GRC, I highly recommend for I highly recommend to follow Jared Auger from the US because he's like a one-stop solution for GRC and related stuff. And information and security analyst is also there, which heavily involves ISO 27001 and ISO 27002 standards and ISMS in general. And one more role is like compliance or the policy analyst is there. So where the main responsibility is to make sure the organizations is complying to the standards and the policy they have in the place. And there is one more like IT auditor role is there whose main responsibility is to perform the IT audit for an organization. It, it, it is generally the part of a financial audit. And for this, I highly recommend getting a CISA or ISO 27001 lead auditor certification. And CISA is generally provided from ISACA, so they can check it out. And other role is like risk analyst is there, endpoint security admin is there. So these will give you the exposure what is happening in the cybersecurity space. Thank you. Thank you, Vicky, for that. I hope many people will be like messaging LinkedIn for all of this. Uh, I hope you will share your LinkedIn ID at the end of this. So what is the importance of training in cybersecurity world? Now, data backed, 95% of security breach is a result of a human error. If an endpoint, if an endpoint user of a particular system is not trained on cyber hygiene, the company is still be vulnerable to the compromises, irrespective of tools that they have in place. Now, what I mean here is one might have the state of the art technology or tools with them to protect their infrastructure, but if the endpoint system user is not trained enough on cyber hygiene, they might just go ahead and click on the, any of the malicious link that they have received from text or the DM or they could just go ahead and visit any of the website which they should not visit at the first place or just download anything by mistake. So no matter how good of tools that you have in place with you, you still would be highly vulnerable to the breaches unless you provide proper training. I would highly suggest training to endpoint user as a foundation or the basis of any security implementation for the companies. Yeah. Also, uh, there are some scams, you know, as you're a cybersecurity uh, professional, I'm just asking you, like, can you tell us about some of the scams that you have experienced yourself 
uh, as an international student in the UK. So for the new students arriving in the UK, currently there are some scams going on named HMRC scams where they directly call you up and tell you that you have X amount of tax pending impersonating tax officials and it is one of the most common among students and I don't know why most of the students fall for it and they are just kind of scared once they got such calls. Secondly, there is one more popular scam going on Instagram, social media, which is a part of a dogsware attack. In here, what happens is like bad actors on the internet, they will just follow you up, have some conversation to gauge up your depth and knowledge and access your contact list, morph up your picture with some naked person in not so good situation and they just try to threaten you up to provide X amount in form of Bitcoin. Mostly young people falls for it and next up in the list is impersonating being your bank. It is like so and so device has logged in from so and so location, call on this number, provide this reference number if it wasn't you. Typically this scam is run during the middle of night where people can almost get into shock once they realize any of the person has been logged into their account. So what they do next is they just click on the link or dial up the number and once they dial up they will be asked to provide CVV number. Once they oblige, next thing they know is like all the money they have in the account has been siphoned off. So my only advice to anyone is irrespective of if they are students or not, please, please, please do not click on the random links unless it is it is coming from the your known source. Secondly, use social media with utmost caution because it leads to social engineering attacks. Moreover, if since we are talking about social media, enable multi-factor authentication wherever it is possible. It reduces your possibility of being compromised to almost 90%. And thirdly, if anyone is representing from government, they won't con they won't contact you on your phone via a phone call or a text. They would simply send you an official formal letter to just to have the traceable conversation. So please don't fall for such scam. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you for all your uh, you know insights. Uh, I'll uh, I, I really enjoy it uh, because I didn't know much about the cyber security so I wanted to, uh, someone like you to uh, guide the students so thank you thank you so much for this uh, video and uh, I hope uh, it was useful for all the students so yeah thanks for having me Joshua here it was really my pleasure to just translate what I my learnings and I hope my learnings will helpful will be helpful to your audience as well and yeah, if anyone wants to reach me out, LinkedIn will be the best platform. So I will share my link of the LinkedIn and you can share it in the description if you Thank you, Vicky. I will definitely uh, post your uh, LinkedIn uh, uh, link uh, in the description. So guys, if you have any questions, you can click the link uh, in the description uh, and uh, check out Vicky's profile and you can uh, always uh, message him. Uh, so don't forget that. Uh, also, uh, all the best for your uh, journey in cybersecurity. Thank you, Vicky, and thank you, everyone, for this.